Welcome to today's webinar, Connecting the Supply Chain, Moving from Theory to Reality, sponsored by Trimble. I'm Chris Olski with Heavy Duty Trucking, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. I encourage you to ask questions during the webinar at any point, and we will try to address them all. However, if we don't get to yours, don't worry. You will be contacted via email with a response after the event. Our presenters today are Dan Popkin, Senior Vice President uh, with Global Connected Supply Chain, and Dan Clark, Vice President of Product Innovation and Strategy with Trimble's Transportation Division. Dan Popkin is responsible for overseeing Trimble's shipper and carrier transportation management system and visibility businesses. He is an avid customer and culture champion, and in his previous role was the driving force behind the adoption of the Trimble Map Commercial Routing Scheduling vis Visualization and Navigation Platform across a broad range of strategic partners and customers globally. Dan Clark is a transportation industry veteran. He possesses extensive operations and sales experience gained from years of working with leading freight carriers and companies with multi-million dollar supply chains. Clark continues to deliver on his original vision of using best of breed cloud technologies to create an innovative, intelligent transportation system that returns control and visibility to freight shippers at companies of all sizes. So without further ado, I'll hand the reins over to Dan Popkin. So Dan, uh, take it away. Chris, thank you very much. And uh, Dan Clark, it's a pleasure to be here with you um, and, and with the audience this afternoon. Um, I suspect we could all agree that in 2020, COVID has had massive impact on the supply chain. Um, and that this is something that most of you on this call, I imagine are experiencing on a daily basis. Um, COVID has created unpredictable volatility and consumer demand, it's constrained trucking capacity, uh, and it's amplified shipper demand following waves of employee sickness. Um, and this has truly created turbulence in demand and supply and in the flow of freight through which we've seen over the course of the year certain carriers win or lose based on what they haul and their ability to reposition and in which shippers are often faced with limited or expensive capacity. Um, and as an example, just a, a couple months ago, I recall um, hearing of a case in which a shipper literally spent tens of thousands of dollars to move donated medical supplies domestically using a chartered plane because it could not get access to, to truck capacity. So looking back on the year, you know, we, we certainly saw low rates in the second quarter, but they surged in the third quarter as social distancing measures heightened consumer demand. And frankly, as folks started to go to e-commerce vendors and shifted expenditure from services to consumer goods. And all of this resulted in peak retail volumes in the third quarter and very low inventories going into Q4. And these low Q4 inventories coupled with continued strong sales, unfortunately leaves little inventory before sales are expected again to ramp back up for the holidays. Um, so all of this amounts to a recipe for strong truckload demand going into Q4 and into 2021. Now the issue is meanwhile, carriers are struggling to keep drivers in trucks. And this is due to a combination of turnover as well as, frankly, the adverse impact of compliance regulation. And as a result of this, capacity is now at a two-year low, and this is highlighted by all-time high tender rejection rates. And amidst the backdrop of all this volatility, and thanks to shifting consumer expenditure to e-commerce and the phenomenal delivery experience that e-tailers like Amazon are providing, shippers are also being pressured to offer visibility and highly competitive service, which is increasing demands on carriers and on intermediaries accordingly. So we've got this highly dynamic market situation, we've got increasing demand, we've got constrained capacity, and we've got service expectations almost at record levels. 
and shippers we hear want to be able to more flexibly respond to changing market dynamics. And carriers want contract freight with some level of consistency in particular, but also an element of spot for their backhauls and in order to balance lane. And intermediaries benefit from implementing technology that can not only improve capacity sourcing, but also help remove the friction between shippers and carriers by enabling some of these very needs. And so I think it's safe to say that a combination of the impacts of, of COVID, uh, carrier compliance regulations, and growing demand from shippers have accelerated the need to connect carriers, intermediaries, and shippers throughout freight procurement, planning, and execution. And we believe that the most impactful place to start is by connecting procurement networks in order to more accurately predict supply and demand patterns, to more efficiently match freight with capacity, and to improve scheduling and, and load planning in general. And so obviously, in order to do this, you have to not only have the capability to serve shippers, carriers, and intermediaries, but also you've got to have an extensive amount of operational and analytical information from carriers and shippers alike in order to be able to offer the most relevant and desirable loads. And so just in full transparency to the audience, this is one of the reasons why Trimble is so bullish on the connected supply chain in transportation. We feel that we're uniquely positioned to build the connected supply chain and improve productivity and collaboration across the entire industry based on more than 1 million power units that are managed using our various carrier and broker TMS applications and telematic solutions, and almost 25,000 shippers that are using our Cubix shipper TMS and community load match applications. And so, as I had mentioned, you know, we're hearing from shippers that shippers would like to be able to more flexibly respond to changes in market conditions than what's currently possible given anywhere between three and eight months we hear that it takes to complete a traditional freight RFP procurement process. And while carriers have some interest in using spot for backhauls and to balance lanes, at least ours are principally interested in securing new customer opportunities that involve at least somewhat consistent contract freight with repeatable lanes. And so having a unified platform that connects these stakeholders is essential to taking procurement to the next level so that carriers can find new customers and post multiple lanes and create contract rights right off of spot moves and reposition assets in order to fill empty miles. Um, as Challenger experienced, and you're gonna hear a, a little bit more about this later when Dan Clark speaks, the connected supply chain platform enables carriers to gracefully transition from spot to contract business when appropriate with minimal time and, and effort. And so ultimately what this platform is all about is improving collaboration between stakeholders in order to create efficiencies and scale during the digital transformation that we're experiencing. And with that, Dan, let me hand over to you. Uh, thanks, Daniel. Wicked smart, as we say from Boston. So uh, first of all, um, I mean, heavy duty truck, and I mean that sounds sounds pretty pretty cool, right? As uh, why we're in this business, I mean it's it's about trucks, and um, I don't know, I just think that name's got some some pretty cool power behind it. So um, super excited to talk some shop with you folks. Um, as Dan outlined, you know, there's a lot of volatility happening, um, but the good news is is you know technology, um, you know, once was was more looked upon as like, geez, how do I how do I get ROI on this? How do I how do I justify spending this money? You know, and and you know, in the past there was a it was more the breakthrough was there was some nice to haves and you know it um, you know it helped manage businesses better. But you know things have changed and the things that Dan talked about and the way the world is moving, um, you know, especially with folks like Amazon changing the way we do business technology. Um, is, is really not um, a nice to have. It's, it's a must. Um, but the good news is, is the cost of technology and the, the adoption of, t of technology is so much easier than it ever has been. Um, and 
when you look at the things that Dan was outlining, you know, what COVID-19 has has um, brought to the table, it's it's look look what we're doing right now. We're we're having a virtual meeting because um, the world has changed and the way we do business has changed, and we need to adapt to how um, the world has changed. And you know, and technology um, is that enabler that's going to help us um, continue to um, compete, allow us to um, be efficient, remove redundancy and cost from our operations. Um, but 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 you but it's you really got to look at it from um, both lenses, and you're looking at it from a shipper lens, and you're looking at it from um, a, um, a carrier lens. And each of these lenses brings something new to the table, brings something um, a need to the table. So when I look at what the shipper demands are today. You know, it's it's. Listen, again, Amazon has changed the way we do business. You know, people want freight yesterday. They want they want to be able to track. They want to be able to have full visibility from pickup to delivery. They want to um, they know they want to know when something happens, when when a claim occurs. Um, they want real time visibility into all the information that happens between pickup and delivery. They want a better way to procure freight, a better way to source carriers more efficiently, right? They don't, you know, the resources in the old days of, you know, sending out these these RFPs to multiple carriers, bringing the information back, going back and forth, you know, th- those days, it, it, those days are um, they're coming to an end. It's it, it's an inefficient process, and technology, the the advancement of technology is going to change how shippers and carriers do business. I mean, look at it. Listen, I spent my life in this business, and you know, from a carrier's perspective, you know, what do you, what do you what do you want the most? You want you want new customers, right? You want to be able to um, acquire new customers at a super low cost. You want to be able to um, get paid fairly for what you do. And what do shippers want? Shippers want to have the ability to source carriers where their freight fits their needs, so that they can have a better um, experience with that carrier and i always say there's there's no bad freight right there's just bad pricing right so when when you look at the you know through both of these different lenses at the end of the day it really comes down to is how can we work better together um where we're both going to be efficient and our experience is going to um be that much greater and and that's and that's where technology and that's where dan talks about this this connected supply chain and when when it's 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 getting harder to compete in this business um you know the regulations that carriers have you know between the government their internal their internal assets their their resources the drivers you know it it's it's tough to compete in this environment and you know fortunately um technology is is going to help us um do a better job competing do a better job of doing what we do which is Picking up freight and delivering it. So when I go over to and I and I and I drill down deeper into, um, you know, these three pieces, right? Whether it's, you know, this, this the COVID um, landscape, the demands of shippers, and the demands of compliance for carriers. When you kind of peel the onion back, you know, it's it's really about creating this this single platform where all stakeholders can work together. And, you know, we talked about remote collaboration, right? You've got to have the ability where you can work remotely. And, you know, mobile obviously is a must, but being able to work from your home or some off-site location um, and being able to execute on all the things that happen within the logistics space, it, it's, it's a must. Um, you know, I look at visibility, and, you know, visibility – um, really comes down to, you know, I need to be able to know not only where my freight is, you know, when it was picked up, when it's going to be delivered, but, but I need to know when, I need to know when the truck's going to be available, right? I need to know the availability of a truck. And, and the, a lot of these investments have already been made with the requirements of telematics within the cabs. So this, these, this hardware that, that, that's there today, that can be leveraged, it can be leveraged through technology to provide um, all stakeholders access to that information that you want to share, that you want to provide, to obviously provide a better opportunity to, A, for a carrier acquire new customers, and B, for a shipper to um, 
have the ability to source new carriers that fit the needs of your freight. Um, I, I look over at, um, you know, these, 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 um, this procurement side of it, and when I look at procurement, it comes with what we call modules, right? So modules of a TMS. You know, everybody talks about, oh, you need to go invest all this money in this, in this, in this huge TMS, but, but really what you need to look at is I need certain modules that's going to help me become more efficient. It's going to help me with my procurement process. And for those carriers um, or shippers looking for more, more advanced capabilities, those are different modules that you will um, – leverage to obviously optimize your own supply chains. But the days of having to go in and buy these huge systems, those days are past, right? It's, it's more of a um, technology is it can be delivered in a much easier, more efficient process. And that's because of the adoption of, of, of microservices, right? And the integrations of different APIs that can connect systems to systems. So when you when you peel the onion back and you look at this and you say, hey, I'm a I'm a small carrier. I need to manage everything from my from my phone, or I have one dispatch that needs to have some back office um, capabilities. You know, it's it's how do I how do I manage my business from a a core planning and execution process? And that's where these modules um, can be delivered um, in an easy easy fashion. I always look at. It, it has to be as easy as, as booking a flight online, right? Um, and, and that's how you're going to get adoption. And it, it's all about how do I also onboard, right? So I, I have an ERP system. And how can I take this information and connect it to my ERP system easily? So from a shipper standpoint, I have all these new carriers or brokers or intermediate, you know, 3PLs that I want to onboard. How do I, how do I connect to these to these folks and how can I easily set up um, those APs within my ERP system and, and vice versa for a carrier? How can I onboard all these new shippers? I'm a small, I'm a small carrier with limited resources. I don't have the cast of Ben-Hur to go out there and, and manage all this stuff uh, manually. How can I connect and how can I create these ARs in my ERP so I can successfully invoice um, these shippers? And, and that's really when we talk about coming together on this um, connected platform. And when we talk about a connected platform, it's, it's really simple, right? It's, 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 it's agnostic. It's a platform that connects to other platforms. It's a, connect, it's a platform that connects to other TMSs, ERPs, solutions. It's a platform that is unbiased to all stakeholders and all technologies. It's a platform where everybody can compete and transact on everyday business. And when I look at a connected platform, it's just envision this, this single platform where shippers, carriers, and intermediaries are all coming together to transact. And within this platform, it, it's driven by an operating system. And the operating system is what we call a network TMS. And that network TMS can be, as I said earlier, a, um, a basis for a simple core modules that allow you to do the basic planning and execution of your everyday business to the more complex optimization modules for more advanced shippers and carriers. But understand that it's a network TMS that works for all shippers, carriers, and intermediaries. And we believe when all information and all people are connected together in real time, not, not only can you um, grow your business successfully because you now have the ability to, to in real time connect to these different folks. But, but if you can take a step back and look at what this platform is really delivering, it's delivering a solution that allows every stakeholder within this connected platform to leverage the greatest of, and the best in breed technologies. So if you've already purchased a visibility tool, if you already have a, um, a TMS or if, you know, that has certain modules, but you're looking for ad advanced capabilities or you're looking for the ability to source easier, this connected platform that brings everybody together but easily connects to the internal infrastructure that you're already using because of microservices, because of um, – the, the suite of APIs that can be used to connect the information. And when all of that's happening, 
the data that that's used is is powerful to the point where it, it'll come to the point where the system is going to help um, understand who the most optimal carrier should be for a particular shipment, and 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 vice versa, right? Who's the optimal shippers um, from a carrier's lens that I should be doing business with because it fits my network because the information that we have can now be leveraged and used to understand where the best fit is between the stakeholders. And what's really unique is when you look at these connected platforms, it's, it's really about how do I control the data? I, I'm in control of this information. This is my information that I want to be able to share what I say I can share. So, and, and that's really the power of, of, of looking at these solutions is that, hey, I can – I'm in control of my data. I'm in control of what I share, but understand that what you're sharing and all stakeholders sharing this information, the system, this connected platform can help optimize the procurement process for all stakeholders that are involved. So when you think of a connected platform, just think of agnostic, unbiased to all stakeholders and um, all technologies, meaning that it's just going to be able to connect to everything and everyone and brings all parties together, which allows us to um, unlock the data. And w when you come over to um, an example, a good use case of this is what we did with Challenger. And you know, Challenger, you know, you know, problem is, is you know what I just outlined, right? It's just it's it's a uh, it's just difficult to identify identify target lanes, find new customers, um, and you know, being in this connected platform creates these opportunities in real time that they can now um, build up their new customer base with business that fits their needs. So that when, when both parties are optimal, that's when it becomes a win-win, right? It's, you know, it's the days when shippers beat up carriers to shop in the pencils. You know, listen, you know, shippers want to clean, they want a swept out truck, they want new equipment, they want professional drivers, that costs money. They want freight delivered yesterday. That costs money. So the expense of moving freight has increased um, to the point where technology needs to be leveraged so that both parties, all parties, can move the freight at an efficient level so that costs can be reduced and redundancy can be removed. So it, it's this, this today, where we are, it, it's exciting. I mean, this is... This is trucking, right? We're, 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 in the, we're in the job of picking up freight and delivering it on time claims free. That's what we do, right? And at the end, it's, we make things very complicated because of all the things that go wrong. And if you, can, if you can put all of the stakeholders in this collaborative platform where there's constant communication, real-time visibility and transparency from pickup to delivery, and where shippers and carriers can understand their – each other's information where it'll be successful for both parties to engage, that's when, that's when it becomes a win for everybody. You know, I, you know, I put my carrier hat on and it's, and you go through these different RFPs and it's like, listen, I don't need practice pricing freight. I know how to price freight. I just want to make sure that the, in, you know, what I'm, what I'm bidding on or what I'm trying to um, compete against is freight that is what is being told to me. So I need to understand the information. I need to understand what are the requirements. Is this a, is this a drop and pick? Is this a live unload, a live pickup? What are the, all of the, the things that go into successfully pricing freight? And, and that's where information, unlocking that data, is going to be powerful to all stable, stakeholders. Because in the end, it's just about picking it up and delivering on time and claims free. And, and that's, that's what's exciting right now when you – when you look at what's changing in the industry, yeah, there's a lot of things that are making it super hard to do business. And I look at companies like Challenger, and they're like, hey, I, I need to create this, this awesome customer experience. And technology can help enable that, right? So not every move can you move with your own fleet. There's many cases where you need to, you need to augment your fleet with, with brokers or, or a small carrier fleet. But everybody working off this platform that has these these, these – these tools that allows you to give that seamless, single, one-stop shop experience to the customer, the shipper, that's a win. And, and technology enables that. Technology connects. And, you know, I just, 
I know when we hear the word technology, a lot of times we, you know, it's it's one of those things like, oh, here's another thing that we got to go buy. Here's another thing we got to go spend money on. It's technology is the point now in the 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 path to these connected platforms. It's not about that. It's not. It's it's more about this is how I'm going to be able to compete in this volatile world, and technology becomes more of a must have than a nice to have. But again, the good news is, is with technology becoming more mature, the adoption of microservices and different APIs allows access to these different tools and to be delivered at a much less cost than was ever once understood. So the days of the enterprise carriers or enterprise shippers being the ones that could only afford technology, technology is now in position to be delivered to all size companies, regardless of um, complexity. So that's, it's a, it's a, it's an exciting time right now um, in this industry, even though we have all this volatility that's, that's causing a lot of pain. Um, But I, I, I truly believe that once we deliver um, the next gen of how we conduct business, it's going to be a win for all parties. So with that said, Daniel, I'm going to turn it back over to you to talk a little bit about uh, the uh, unlocking the data. Oh, sorry, I was just talking on mute. Thank you, Dan. Awesome. Um, yeah, and I think, Dan, exactly as you kind of explained, it's, it's, it's the technology and being on the common platform that truly unlocks the efficiency and the collaboration that we've been discussing. Similarly, it's when all stakeholders are in fact working within this common platform that the very important data that Dan had previously alluded to can be locked, uh, unlocked to optimize the sourcing process. And so as, as you would expect, and again, this is something Dan commented on previously, data is central and fundamental to the concept of, of having a connected supply chain collaboration platform. Um, and this, you know, starts at a very basic one to one or even one to many level in order to drive greater freight match efficiency, for example, by leveraging truck location and plan trip information in conjunction with a carrier's network and specific needs. But this very quickly evolves to a many to many level of optimization that will more dramatically improve carrier asset utilization and shipper freight coverage. And so really what the challenge is, is that current technology really only allows for optimization within the context of a single company entity. Um, But optimization within the context of a single carrier's or a single shipper's siloed view of their supply chain is inherently limiting. And you know, otherwise we we wouldn't have carrier operating ratios in excess of 90%. Um, We wouldn't see, you know, roughly 15% of miles being empty, roughly 8% of mileage being out of route. Um, You definitely wouldn't have underutilized trailers sitting for days in, in trailer pools otherwise. And so we know that there is a network effect that's required to truly optimize at this many to many level. And that only comes through this centralized integration approach that connects supply chain networks and our fleet management systems and our trailer tracking and our fuel cards and visibility and other capabilities and and stakeholders. And and doing all of this back to the data requires not only availability of that data, but orchestration and democratization. And as Dan had mentioned, the data has got to be unified, it's got to be managed, and most importantly, it has to be shared based specifically on the preference and control of the participants within the community. Um, And that's something that, you know, we've enabled, for example, with our, within the connected supply chain, with our uh, Trimble Trust Center data access management capability. Um, So this is really the journey that we've kicked off at, at Trimble with our connected supply chain platform. Um, it's an example of the, the type of data that has already started flowing through the platform that we're using to design and enhance our AI and ML optimization algorithms. Um, and so hopefully that gives you a, a better feel for how a connected supply chain platform can truly 
start to unlock some efficiency gains um, and investment returns in the industry. With that, I am going to um, hand back to Chris, I believe, for some Q&A. Hey, uh, Dan, I'm just going to jump into one little, just add one yeah, little please, bit on top please, of that. Sam. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Um, again, super appreciate um, the opportunity to talk some shop. But one of the things when you really, and Dan brought up a good, really good point about this network effect, and, you know, my past life, um, I spent my career on the trucking side and um, founder of Cubix that was recently acquired by Trimble. And what's super exciting about this this acquisition and what we're doing with this connected supply chain is we're bringing together 25,000 shippers and 1.3 million assets to a common single platform so that shippers, carriers, and intermediaries can do business better together. And it, and it does come down to density. It does come down to demand and supply. And creating this connected supply chain, and when we have the ability to unlock this data, because we have the density of all of these stakeholders, that's, that's when you're going to be able to really look at these t this, this platform as, you know, I need to be able to connect, and I need to be able to do it at a low cost, and I need to be able to successfully compete in this business. And, you know, I look at small carriers, small shippers, technology is enabling these folks to compete at the highest of levels. And not only that, it allows them to more successfully manage their own day-to-day -day business. Um, so, you know, what I, what I want to at least leave with you guys is a connected supply chain is driven by density, and that's the network effect Dan's talking about. And a connected supply chain is about unlocking the data to make all parties more efficient, but it is still driven and operated by what we call a network TMS, where you have to have modules, you have to have tools to do the core functions of planning and executing your daily operations. And you've got to have the ability to connect to existing infrastructures or architecture that have already been invested by the stakeholders. Or, or provide tools that can give um, users that are looking for more complex solutions the ability to easily connect to those. And that's what's really exciting about where technology is going, especially in this space. And, I, and I'll go back to heavy-duty trucking, right? It's like, listen, as a kid, there's nothing better than getting a new truck and playing with trucks. And, you know, I'm almost 50 right now, and, and I'm still playing with trucks. And it's, that's, that's the exciting part of this. And I, I do want to say thank you to every single person that has um, allowed us all to kind of keep the world moving. You guys have all made some tremendous sacrifices. Talk about essentials. You know, without, without trucking, um, the world stops. And you all have done just an unbelievable job of, of keeping this world moving, especially with all the volatility and, and on the, you know, we're, we're in a pandemic. And, you know, you folks that are on the front lines that are, that are making all this happen, I got nothing to say but thank you. So with that said, Chris, I'll turn it back over to you, bud. All right, great. Well, thanks, uh, thanks for that, Dan. And uh, thanks to both the Dans. Uh, I think we, we all have a much better understanding about how we can keep our supply chains connected and, and uh, particularly moving forward uh, as, uh, with technology. Uh, so we do have some time for um, questions. So let's answer a few of those that came in. I also want to remind all those uh, who are on the line with us today that uh, you can add in uh, uh, questions uh, anytime. So uh, don't feel that uh, you don't, you've missed your opportunity. So please ask away. So with that, I'll uh, wait in our first question. So uh, I think um, I will just throw this out and either the Dan's, um, you know, pick it up and run with it. Uh, is there a, the first question is, is there a way to limit opportunities to my geographic area uh, and needs? Yeah, so maybe I can at least kick us off here. Um, okay. You know, if you're if you're a carrier and you're interested in using this platform um, to to source freight, 
um, there is no obligation for you to effectively procure along or enter all of your lanes into the system. So you're, you know, able to surgically target, for example, where you might have backhaul needs, right, or where you may need mm -hmm. to do some rebalancing between your, your lanes or where, you know, strategically you want to target for RFP um, activity. Um, so, yeah, a carrier would have full flexibility to kind of surgically target where it's looking for freight or to expose effectively its entire network for match. Okay. Yeah. Well said, Daniel. I just, you know, just, you know, just to, you know, one of the things that we, we don't need practice on how to price freight. I think you guys have all been doing this a long time mm -hmm. and shippers don't want to have, you know, opportunities given to folks that really don't want it. So, and, and time is obviously super important. So being able to have a platform that allows you to configure your geographic footprint of where you want to see opportunities um, and, where car and where shippers can see which carriers um, will be the best optimal fit for their freight within those, uh, within those, um, within those areas is, is, is a must in a, in a connected platform. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, and Dan uh, Clark, I'm going to keep keep you in the hot seat. Uh, okay. so, uh, question uh, from a small carrier listener, and they are uh, say they're struggling with getting shippers. How do I connect to this data? So, kind of goes to the heart of what you were talking about. Yeah, no, no, that's that's a, I mean, that's that's why we do it, right? So, how do I get new customers at low acquisition cost? And right. that's the beauty of this connected platform. It's it's so like, listen, it, it's, and, and I say the word agnostic, unbiased. You'll hear that a thousand times. Right. It's a platform where shippers and carriers can meet and conduct business. It's that simple. So being able to, um, you know, easily sign up for the, um, to be, you know, part of the community, uh, what we call our community carriers, for example, um, super easy. Um, once you signed up, you now have access um, based on where you, again, to the previous question, you have now have access based on where you're looking for freight. And what we encourage most, most of anything is once you have the opportunity, as Dan outlined earlier, so say you get a spot opportunity from a t particular shipper, we encourage that collaboration between you and that shipper to turn that, that spot opportunity into um, a contract business. Um, you know, so you can have more regular business, whether it's project work, whether it's, you know, you know, twice a week, twice a month, quarter, half year, whatever you set up, we encourage you to take that next step with that shipper to build that relationship. And I, you know, shippers, a lot of times they want to look at it too. They, they, first of all, they want to test the price elasticity in the marketplace. That's some of the reasons for a spot or they just need to find new capacity, right? For particular lanes or new lanes they may have, but it also gives them the opportunity to um, work with new carriers that may fit really well within um, each other's networks. So um, we encourage it. Okay, great. And this, I, I actually, this uh, occurred to me while I was listening, so I'm going to follow up here, uh, just kind of piggyback off this question. What would you say, and, and Dan Pop can uh, feel, feel free to jump in on this as well, um, what would you say is maybe, I, I, how do you get started? I mean, what, I mean, is it is just signing up, or, or what, what are some of the first steps to, to kind of make this shift that you're, you're proposing here to this more connected data oriented approach as opposed to the, you know, do it the way we've been doing it for the last hundred years, sending out RFPs and pricing and all the other very uh, convoluted ways that, that uh, we, we've done it in the pre-digital age. Yeah, you know, so Dan, I'll start and you can finish it um, on this. Um, you know, listen, there's different connections with, you know, you know, let's say Carrier Form 1 or getting the different CSA scores. So, you know, having a platform mm -hmm. that's connected to these different tools so that when we curate our carriers, when we bring our carriers into our network, it, you know, there's still an onboarding process, right? Because we have to, the mm -hmm. carriers need to be qualified and they're qualified by the, you know, the different pieces, um, no different than what they're doing today with any other shipper, but we pre-qualify the carriers onto our platform and our shippers now have visibility to that qualified carrier for them to do business together. We have our online tools that allows those carriers and shippers to conduct business together 
uh, for more advanced um, capabilities. We have the ability to integrate, like I said, into the different um, ERP or TMS systems that folks are using. So that agreement between that shipper and carrier can automatically be um, connected, um, creating their contract agreements within their own internal systems. So depending on how you want to play in this connected platform, if it, 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 just keep in mind, and one of our philosophies, and I said this earlier in our conversation, it has to be as easy as um, booking a flight online. You, you have right. to be, yeah, there's some, there's some different, like when you book a flight online, you, you see who the carrier is, American Airlines or Southwest or whoever it is, you know about that carrier. So we provide that same visibility to the shippers, and we provide the same visibility to the carriers about the shippers. Right? This, is a, this is two lenses right, that are being looked through um, for a common goal, and we want to make sure that this collaborative platform has the tools where these shippers and carriers can talk and conduct business together, and then once that business is agreed upon, depending on the, the complexity of that shipper or carrier, information can be integrated back into their existing infrastructure. Okay. Got it. Dan uh, Popkin, do you want to add to, any, add to that at all? No, I think, I think Dan nailed it. All right. Great. Well, let's move, let's move on. So, um, Dan uh, Popkin, since uh, you're in the hot yep. seat now, I'll keep you there. Uh, and this is a question about, I guess, uh, um, terminology. So is a connected platform the same as a digital freight marketplace? So maybe you could clarify that that a little bit. Yeah, well, yeah, so to me, I see this as being a little different. When I look at the digital freight marketplaces out there, I kind mm -hmm. of look at those more or less as, as being – you know, digital brokers, right? And they're often, you know, very focused on on spot opportunity. When I think of the connected supply chain platform, you know, first of all, you know, it, it's not a broker, right? So it has nothing to do with with pricing, um, you know, between shippers and carriers. Really what this is is a technology platform that the different market participants are operating off of in order to become more efficient and to improve their collaboration together. And it helps with the procurement piece, but certainly um, not at all with, with the pricing piece. The other kind of key difference from my perspective between the connected supply chain platform and kind of a, a digital freight matching platform is, as Dan had kind of alluded to, just the sheer capacity uh, of carrier assets and tractors that operate on the platform and then, you know, the 20,000 plus shippers that you have. Effectively, you've got all these entities that are continuously operating within the platform, generating that operational and uh, analytical data that we need to optimize at that many-to-many -many level. And so, um, you know, a, a connected supply chain platform truly creates, in our opinion, uh, that that real opportunity to optimize, you know, at a uh, richer level, um, but also to, you know, truly improve the collaboration between those stakeholders just by virtue of, of all the data that you have residing within the system because it's the platform of record. Yeah, yeah right. Dan, you nailed that, that was right on the money. I just want to add, you know, so one thing about, again, a, a connected platform, the key word connected, we, we, you know, mm -hmm. the platform loves DFMs, right? Digital freight matching companies do a fantastic job, and we were connected to, to many of these, right? And I, I, I you know, again, it's, it's about being agnostic, unbiased. So the more folks that are part of this platform, the better the platform is. And we, you know, digital freight matching platforms, we connect to them, right? So they may have, they may have a, um, an opportunity that they're looking to source. So we'll have an integration with that DFM. And it'll connect into our platform, and it'll be, they'll be able to source carriers um, and vice versa, right? They might be on the carrier side. So an opportunity might come into our platform, and we'll connect to that platform and provide that opportunity to that DFM for them to bid on. So, again, connected platform agnostic. We love all stakeholders. Okay, great. Well, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. So for anyone who asked a question that wasn't answered, uh, we will be following up via email to answer them individually after the event. Uh, we do hope that you all enjoyed today's webinar. I want to again thank uh, Dan Popkin and Dan Clark.
and of course the entire Trimble team for today's presentation. I also want to mention that this webinar will be available on demand on the Heavy Duty Trucking website at truckinginfo forward slash webinars. Again, I want to thank everyone who attended uh, today for, for uh, spending some time with us, and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.